What would be the biggest, I guess, benefit of getting getting money back this week, uh, having a linebacker rotation? Oh, I can't re recall the last time I played sixty to seventy plays. Yeah. Um, it, that rotation helps, man. It helps a lot, and I'm I'm so glad he's back. Just back from a talent standpoint, too. What's it going to mean? Uh, definitely more, more more legs on the field, fresh legs with guys you can trust. Um, he, he's a, a trustworthy guy, does everything right, does what he's supposed to do, practices hard. So it's definitely a weight off everyone's shoulder. How did that affect your performance? Do you think uh, playing that many snaps, did you start to feel fatigued? Um, not really. That's what the fourth quarter program here is for. Um, four times when a guy goes down and anything like that, that we're able to stand in, in those later quarters. So I don't really feel like it affects much, but it's, it's more beneficial. Hurtful. Looking at the uh, offenses, you know, with Missouri, they're more spread you out type of deal. Tennessee is more downhill. As a linebacker, you know, do you guys look forward to kind of playing those teams that'll more run up the gut kind of deal or, or what? Um, uh, I can't really tell you from from another linebacker standpoint, but I know from mine, um, that's the way I'd rather have it. Mm -hmm. um, it. It's more spread in, run the ball downhill, man on man. And then as you talk about the linebacker rotation and. Um, with the talk being about the run defense the past two weeks, just Monty being back, does that does that give y'all more confidence they all are going to be able to stop the run better than y'all have? I mean, um, well, I say definitely. Um, just those first legs, getting another guy in there, um, he probably can bring a spark that us other two couldn't. So it, you you just never know. Your teammates talked before the season about how big it was that you were going to be back. How would you assess how you've played? So far this season, have you played up to the level you want to play at? Um, obviously, there's always room for improvement. Um, if I'm being critical of myself, that obviously I say I haven't been playing to my top capability, um, and that, that goes with my coaches. And we, we strive for greatness here. So uh, good isn't good enough. Um, you can always do better. How, always room for improvement. I was going to ask you. You know, we we've looked at TFLs. We look at run defense. Missouri five yards on first downs. How how personal do you take that? I mean, how high do you set your personal bar? What do you think you can do better? I take that very personally, and this defense take that very personally. Um, that that's a that's something we pride ourselves on stopping the run in this defensive in this defense. Stopping the run is the number one priority. So obviously, uh, those guys had more yards than, than we would like, and that's definitely something that we're going to put an emphasis on. How tired are you guys of hearing about all that? Oh, man. But honestly, it's just feeding fuel to the fire because we, we took that personally. We knew that. We knew how we played after that game. We knew how much better we could be at stopping the run, so everyone took it as a chip on the shoulder. A lot of talk's been about the run defense, but you guys improved in getting pressure on the quarterback mm -hmm. in that game. When you see guys like DeAndre Walker play the way that he did, um, is that something you guys expect to be more consistent with going forward now that you've shown you have the capability? To um, it'll come. The players will come. Um, guys just got to uh, fundamentals, technique, stay within the game, and the players will come for him. Everybody knows what type of player he is. So those players will come. Uh, you talk about it being a chip on your shoulders. The last thing I'll ask about this. But like, what was the feeling like after that game? I mean, did it kind of, from a standard standpoint, the the morale of the team, did it kind of feel like y'all y'all lost that game just because you didn't stop the run? Like to be honest, um, the, the game comes down to wins and losses. Come down to wins and losses, so it was a good job in, in getting a W at the end of the day. But as far as a standard standpoint, it, it definitely felt like a loss. It definitely felt like a loss. What was your um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Just because um, guys on the defense wasn't proud of the performance, we wasn't excited about what 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 happened so it, it definitely felt like a lost guys was ready to get after it this week i was going to ask about your relationship with jeremy Pruitt. i get did he recruit you did he coach you what definitely. can you tell what what kind of coach was he when he was here what was your relationship like um great great coach players coach um always stuck up for his guys um what knew, knew, knew his defenses really well and that's just the impression I got from him. But it's it's exciting to be able to play against him. What do you think the biggest challenge is going to be playing against him and his style of coaching? Um, I just know he's going to get those guys ready to play. Um, when you got a coach like that, guys don't mind playing for him. And he, he, he's able to get everybody ready for any game. So you just got to go into it with, with that mentality, just that 
we're, we're coming here to win. Nothing else. It's not a game off. It's not a not a game off. We, we're not worried about records or wins and losses or anything like that. We're just going into play. Uh, uh, on a Monty, I mean, last week we had the chance to speak to him, and he's this guy that's got this really like serious and stoic mentality in terms of getting the job done. Um, how does he kind of translate that onto the field? You know, like what do you see in his drive and his determination. Just plays with a lot of aggression. Um, that, that's uh, something that that's really useful when you play a linebacker. He just plays with aggression, plays with with the attitude, with the mentality. So all of that goes into his persona of who he is a per, as a person. David Marshall is somebody that is not necessarily one that you hear his name all the time. But what is he like? His role on the defense, like how is that critical or crucial to y'all success? Oh, man, big Dave Stout. That's the word I use for him, stout. Um, he doesn't give up much yardage. He doesn't. He holds his point of attack, and I feel like it's very, very key for us. It says all of those front guys, uh, they they make our job easier. They make our job better, and when they're on, the the, the defense is on. Period. Your teammates have called you a vocal leader. How, how crazy do you get out there? I mean, when when you fire up the troops, I mean, it's more than just calling out signals, isn't it? Uh, definitely. Um, I wouldn't really call it crazy. I don't, I don't know. Maybe from the outside looking in, that's what it looked like. But I, I wouldn't call it crazy. I just, I say passionate, man. Uh, those guys out there, what we do, we work so hard. So when you see something that's not up to the standard or you see something that's not the way it's supposed to be, like guys call each other out. And that's not just me calling another guy out. That's another guy calling me out as well. It works both ways. You guys lost uh, Tyson Campbell for a little bit this game. Uh, Stokes came in. Lost um, offensive lineman Justin Schaefer comes in. What's the quality of the depth on this team? Do you think now? Next man up. Next man up. That's just football in general. That's why we recruit. That's why we practice. That's why we practice ones, twos, threes, and fours. That's why we do what we do. Because you, you, you don't just have 11 guys on the team or 22 guys on the team. You you got a team full of people for a reason. That one guy down now, next guys up. Do you think the top 40 is higher quality given the recruiting? Classes they brought in the last couple of years. I feel the entire 105 top quality. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned uh, Campbell and Stokes. Obviously, they had two big takeaways in the game. Um, obviously, how big of that is the focus for y'all in practice, getting takeaways, and how do you kind of balance being aggressive and maybe sometimes missing a tackle because you're trying to get a takeaway or something like that? Um, it's definitely a focal point, uh, taking the ball away. But we preach securing the tackle first, and everybody's to the ball, so we know. In a game, guys miss tackles, but we want to prevent those extra yards from those missed tackles. So we just try to get after the ball and, and 11 hats to the ball. What's one mentality or focus that you learned from Pruitt when he was here that you've continued to um, like use it day to day in practice? Um, physical, physical. He, he preached physical toughness a lot, so that still stands. What have you seen from Tennessee's running backs? It seems they've, they've got a bigger, younger guy. I mean, you got all the numbers and you. Have Watched all the film. What I mean, how good are those guys compared to what you've seen already? Um, those guys run the ball hard. That's what we see on film. They run it hard, so we just got to be ready to tackle big. When you say tackle big, what do you what do you mean? Body on body. Body on body.